Unix, C++, Java, and SQL. And primarily, I'm into it. I'm a, a data warehousing guy. I spent most of my 12 years on the data warehousing platform. And uh, I've been ported to Python, you know, four or five years back. Let me record this session. This conference will now be recorded. Yeah. So I'm Nagashwin, having 12 years of experience, you know, working in IT in different domains and different technologies, C, C++, Unix, Java, and been ported to Python, you know, for four, four, four and a half years back. So what, uh, what exactly this buzzword, you know, we are listening, you know, we are keep on hearing this word Python in the IT industry from the long, you know, from the last four or five years. And there is, a, you know, many people are trying to port on the Python. So what exactly Python is and how exactly it is helping the programmers and what is the future of the Python that we are going to discuss right now, okay? So I collected some kind of information from the web, you know, and um, I'm trying to present in front of you. See, Stack Overflow is one of the famous sites for um, you know technology people. Technology people, if you see the bar graph, you know which is happening. What the trend is happening from 2002 to 2018, you see in a hue the pink line, the pink line in the center of the graph, which shows the high demand. You know people are searching for Python like hell. See, the moment you know C++ came into the market, actually it is one of the very good player. Yeah, PHP or is also a super player in come in. In when it comes to the web technologies, okay. The moment C hash came, the moment C hash came from the Google tech uh, from uh, Microsoft, it is also playing absolutely brilliant. But the beauty, the beauty of uh, the uh, the beauty of Java is it is you know way you know it is it is doing absolutely brilliant from the day one it is introduced, and there is no competitor for Java. Frankly speaking, frankly speaking, there is no competitor for Java. The reason being, it has come sits with a lot of techno and a lot of uh, you know buzzwords like robust, secure, platform independent, Java virtual machine, blah 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 blah. So if you see this graph, actually, no other technology is competing with Java. No other technology is competing with Java. You know, you can uh, you can leave JavaScript. The reason being, it is not. It is completely into the web technologies, you know, and uh, it is completely to the web technologies front end. But if you see Python, the growth is absolutely brilliant and it is drastic, actually. It is drastic. And this is, you know, this is from the stack overflow. So uh, I still capture, I only captured till 2018. In 2019, it is doing, you know, absolutely brilliant. And, you know, some say like the future is Python. You know, the future is Python. Fine. So, and this is the expected, this is the expected growth. The expected growth is too big that it is surpassing all the technologies that is coming into the market, all the surpassing all the technology which is already existing in the market. Okay. So, and it is from the David Robinson, who is from the Stack Overflow. He says like, he says, you know, he just explains about what we discussed. Like, it, Python is doing absolutely brilliant. And the, the graph that we just discussed is, the graph that we just discussed is only you know, on a high level. In the real time, it is more. It is more than that. Okay, it is more than that. So, who are using Python? So, initially, who are using Python? So, before going into this topic, let's see a kind of trend that we are seeing for um, for the growth of Python from the you know Veronica. Veronica, actually, let's have this video, and this explains the growth of Python. See, in 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 the bottom corner, actually, you can see the years 2012, September 2010, and the market share of Python there. It's a small video, okay, one minute video. See, even in 2013, only 5% of the people are using Python. And Java is doing absolutely brilliant.
See, by 2018, you see the 11% of the world is using Python. So it, we can say that, you know, we, we really can say that this is the starting time. This is the starting time to learn Python. Because, you know, in future, for sure, the Python is going to be play a very good role. Okay, so fine. Python is going to do very good. So what exactly, you know, <clears throat> now, how exactly it is doing it? What is so special about it? So we will see this, okay? So top companies using Python. Who are using Python? Mozilla Firefox, Google, Facebook, Dropbox, Twitter, IBM, Amazon. You know, just the, the most famous companies are using Python. And these are, these are seen. Every company is using Python these days. But these companies are the companies which are using Python in the initial days of Python. You know, these can I say something like these companies actually helped Python to grow into the market. Okay. So what are the so advantages of Python? What are the advantages of Python? What are the advantages of Python? Before going um, before going to that, I just want to give an introduction of the guy you know who created Python. So this is the guy who created Python. So he is a Guido van Rassum. He is from Netherlands. Okay. He is from Netherlands. He did his MS in the University of Amsterdam in 1982. And he is currently working with Dropbox. So let me take a note of it so that we will... So what is his name? His name is Guido van Rassum. Okay, he is from he is from Netherlands, or you can say it is he is from Dutch. Clear? Done his MS in University of Amsterdam. Fine. So currently he is working with Dropbox. So if we see his career, how if he sees work, his career, actually he named the Python based on his favorite magazine called the Complete Monty Python's Flying Circus. You know, there is a magazine called Complete um, Monty Python Flying Circus. And from there, actually, he took the word Python and gave it to this programming language. Okay, so <clears throat> what, is the, what is the first version of Python when it started? On a high level, I can say like 1989, 1999, 2009. It's not exactly. It's you can say something like 2010 or something like this. 2000. This is a kind of a shortcut. 1989, 1999, 2009. Okay. Here, the first version of Python is released. Python second version. and Python third version. Okay, Python become so famous after Python second version. So what exactly happened? In 1988, in 1999, he came up with a Python as a programming language. Nearly in 1990s, in the second part of 1990s, meaning you know, from 1995 to 1995 to 2000, he started working with Google. He started working with Google. So Google found the Google understood. You know, we can say something. Like Google understood the power of Python, and Google understood the power of Python and asked. This guy, you know, we call him as Rasam, okay? Simple name, Rasam, to work on it. So what Rasam did is like, Rasam works for Google four hours every day and next four hours on Python. And this is the, you know, a key point. This is the key time. This is the key time that the Python gained a huge momentum, huge momentum in the market. And the power of Python is, you know, is you know, power of Python is shown to the world, actually. 
Okay, so let's go it from 2005 to two to, from 2005 to December 2012. Okay, I flipped the years. Fine. He worked at Google, where he spent half of the time in developing the Python language. Whereas in 2013, he started working for Dropbox. So can say Dropbox and YouTube. Or let's put it Dropbox as of now. So Dropbox is the first site worked on, created on, or developed on file. Developed on Python. And Rasam works, resigned, you know, resigned Google in 2013 and joined Dropbox. And joined Dropbox. So this is a little history of it. So I put it the, these are the activities exact years 1989 2000 and 2008 so but our convenience so as to remember it you know generally people won't ask but we should have it in our mind like so that's the reason i change the numbers lighter in a, in a little something like 1989 1999 2000 2009 2008 something like you know so that we can come closer to the years fine so these are the years so fine you know we discussed about Python, blah, 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 you know. But what are the advantages of Python? How became it so beautiful? Okay, let's see them. Let's see it. First, it is a simple and easy to learn programming language. It is very, very simple. First of all, it is open source. What is open source meaning? advantages of python python yeah a bit point here python can be called as python or pi pi is a simple word to remember so what are the advantages of python it is a open source meaning free to download no license and free to use, and even free to expand. What is free to expand? For example, if you feel something like you can write a good programming, which can help, uh, you, know, you know, you can write a good programming, and you can expand the functionalities of Python, and you can submit to the Python community. If they're fine and accept, they will include your module or library into the virtual Python. Fine. So it's a open source, no cost paying. Okay, it's a high level programming language. Very clear, right? It's a high level programming language. It's not at you know, it's rock. It is not at the end. It is not at um, an assembly level. You know, there are a lot of programming languages. Right? Assembly level programming language. You know, blah blah blah. It's a high level programming language where people will easily understand. High level programming language. It is mostly in English. As simple as you are reading and writing in English. No complexities are here. Fine. It is in interpreted. It is a interpreter languages. We have two kinds of things. You know, one is compilers and interpreters. Okay. So we will, if you are not aware of what exactly is a compiler and interpreter, we will discuss when our class starts. Whereas it is in, it has an interpreter. Interpreted language. And next thing is large community is a very base for it. Large community. What is large community? What exactly is a large community, guys? <clears throat> Let me tell you. <clears throat> Say like you are working on some programming language. See Python. Okay, you are trying to do some kind of automation um, to sync your Volkswagen car. You know, well, in, in your car you have that audio system, right? So, so as to sync the your Bluetooth to your Volkswagen audio, Volkswagen, Volkswagen. Um, what is this? Um, audio receiver. Audio receiver. You know, you have this functionality. You thought of writing a program and say like you started in some language called X and in Python. 
say you stuck at some point, you stuck at some point, then you need some people to help you, to help you what exactly your problem is, and you need someone to identify and solve that problem. So if you have a huge number of people, you know, who are working on Python, so they really can step in and they really can help you. Whereas uh, for the programming language X, where no one are using, you will stuck and, you know, in the, your time, efforts and everything will go nowhere, right? So it has a large community. So if you have any question, if you, you can just post it in Stack Overflow or any other uh, online helping websites, you will get response very quickly. So large community is very much important. You know, it's it's one of the, it, it plays a very key role in your programming development. No large community. And most thing is, and the most important thing is, it is simple, simple, and simple. Very, very simple this is. And less number of, less number of code lines. See a small example. <clears throat> See a small example. Um, I open and uh, language Java. I'm writing a program called Hello World. Okay. So public, you know, we need to do all these things, right? Public class Hello World bracket open and public static void main string orgs. string box again bracket open system dot system dot out dot print ln hello world see how much I took a good amount of time and even I'm not sure whether it will work or not because we have something like S capitals here, bracket open, square brackets, arcs, blah, blah, blah. Even I'm, you know, a lot of things are there. Whereas in Python, it is as simple as print hello world. Simple. <clears throat> and people say like, you know, this is a perfect way to write a programming language. Reason being, it is in Java. You know, it has a very good function. It is a robust, secure, Java version, blah, 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 a lot of force. <laughs> Say like the security score, the security score here, if I say like out of 10, if I make it as a 9.5, the security score of this program, I can make it as 9.5. You know, I can make the same security score. I can say confidently the security score is also 9.5 with respect to the Python. Okay, so here you see this, right? The Java has a good amount of code, whereas Python has a single line. Fine. Portability. The, the portability concept is very beautiful here. A single Python code, a single Python code can run the same Python code, the single same Python code can run on Mac OS, Windows, PlayStations, Androids, everywhere, just like Java without Java virtual machine. Java has a Java virtual machine where it can run, read, write once, and you know the concept of Java is write once and run anywhere, right? The same thing applies without any Java virtual machine for Python. Parallelly, Python can communicate with C++, C++, .NET, and Java. This is very beautiful feature, actually. This is very beautiful feature. For example, if you feel like in feel like this kind of if you're writing a python program at one particular point of time if you feel like this part of module this part of the code can be easily handled in dotnet then comfortably you can write in dotnet and python can communicate with dotnet and get the result out of it whereas you don't see this kind of functionality with respect to any other programming language this is very beautiful so can i make a point so the point here is like Same code can be ported on Mac, Windows, PlayStations, 
what is it? Android, anywhere, anywhere, any other operating system, any other operating systems. Moreover, it can communicate, it can communicate with other programming languages. This is so awesome and beautiful. Clear? This is so awesome and beautiful, right? It can communicate with and other programming languages. It don't have caste, it don't have religion, it don't have any kind of border feelings. Fine. So next, fine. You are satisfied with the advantage. You are, you are completely happy with the programming. What I'm going to do with this? What I'm going to do this? I'm a web developer. What and how it is going to help for, helpful for me? I'm a testing person. I'm a testing person, you know, testing automation. I never worked on any other programming languages. How this is going to help for me? I'm a big data guy. How this is going to help? You have a lot of questions, right? So the next slides will help you for it. Web development. If you are into web development, so what exactly it means is <clears throat> Python plus. You have to learn Python first of all. Then if you know a module called Django, Flask, Pylons, or Web2Py, you can be into this area of web development. This area of the web development, Django, Flask. These two modules or the uh, uh, modules or the libraries help helps you to port your application on web development. Example, Dropbox. If you're into artificial intelligence, future is artificial intelligence, right? <clears throat> Yeah, Skylar, Clone, Keras, TensorFlow, OpenCV. These are some of the libraries Python has. If you know Python and if you are well versed with these libraries, you can go into the field of artificial artificial intelligence. Computer graphics, Python games, Jython, Tinkter. Yeah, you can go into these areas if you are into computer graphics. Testing frameworks, Splinter and PyTest. PyTest is similar to JUnit in Java. So if you know Python, already you have four areas where you put your resume. First one is into the areas of web development, into the areas of artificial intelligence, into the areas of computer graphics, into the areas of testing framework, four things. This is a key person. This, this is a key role. This plays a key role. We, we are consuming a huge amount of data and this uh, buzz big data is everywhere in the market. Python handles big data without any issues and it, it, it you know, in ultra smooth manner, okay? And just, you know, Hadoop is one solution for, Hadoop is one solution to handle big data. And we have a upcoming PyDoop is also there. Upcoming PyDoop also there. And uh, one of the most demanding technologies of 2009 and 2020 is Spark. You know, you might have heard this name, Spark. Whereas on in Spark, you can absolutely write a beautiful code and flawless code using in a PySpark. Python can communicate with Spark and you can be into the areas of big data. Automations, yeah. You can be into the area of automation. Data science, this is extension. Can I, I can say something like it is an extent, extension to the big data where you can, you know, where you can, you know, you earn good amount of money, you know, very huge amount of money you know, uh, you know, future is data science, okay? Future is data science and machine learning. And if you are comfortable, you know, if you are comfortable enough to learn this NumPy, Pandas, and Matrop C1, not all for anyone, anyone with respect, you know, based on your project, actually, then you can be into the data science. See how many areas you can work on, how many areas you can work on if you learn Python. You can be into the web development, artificial intelligence, computer graphics, testing frameworks, big data, scripting automation and into data science so one you know one ball four boards four to five words okay you can easily you know <clears throat> do this and popularity and high salary see this is one such uh, you know graph that i got it from internet see how much the pi average python developer is paying in us it is 116208 for an employee who has experience of 3 years on h1 the reason being it was not part of our curriculum it is not part of our curriculum it is not part of i mean at least in india it is not part of a curriculum 
you need to learn it separately and moreover people are still in process of understanding it you know still in process of understanding it and companies like uh, google you know games you can like it games already understood the power of it and they started working on it so nasa dropbox instagram facebook youtube raspberry pi google and ibm if you are into a middle level college type system and you can easily go and get a job into these companies using python okay fine so we learned well about python so what exactly i am going to teach to you and how exactly you are going to benefit it from me <clears throat> i am going to teach python and hadoop and pyspark <clears throat> what python it's a complete 45 days it's a complete 45 days i can say you can stop here i mean if you want to learn python alone you can learn only python if you want to continue for the pi spark i can i should put something like hadoop plus pi spark if you want to continue for hadoop plus pi spark yeah you can continue for hadoop and pi spark it's up to you but for the first 45 days i will teach only python and i will give notes for it notes will be provided and i can show a sample notes for you this is a notes that i am giving for the existing people and you know, the existing batch so i will give the complete notes and from install installation from the basics of the python to say you know some people don't have you know some people left programming uh, in engineering itself from the from the basics from the basics to to advanced python advanced python programming or else py programming i will be always available on whatsapp most of the communication will be happen over whatsapp if you have any questions if you are running some code you can take the screenshots and post to me clear and uh, i have a online blog event control plus plus dot com where i post all my findings with respect to python sample programs theory and all those things and there you can also see the interview questions there you can also see the interview interview questions tricky questions tricky questions in python and um, market trends on python what else i need to cover <clears throat> it is up to you whether if you want to continue with hadoop or um, py spark but uh, you know it is going to be something like this you know without this you know really can't uh, you know without python you really can't start hadoop and all those things even so we need to start with python if you want to stop continuing yeah little connection issue if you want to continue after pi spark yeah you can continue class timings and um, weekend classes or something like you know i will communicate over whatsapp if we have any emergencies yeah we can communicate on whatsapp So usually, you know, at what time the class is going to be? Yeah. See, at what time the class is going to be? Yeah, perfect. I am working still. You know, I am working. Uh, I am working. Uh, I am working. So I really can't take after India eleven o'clock or ten o'clock. So the feasible time for me is between morning five to nine o'clock IST. So it. it is not necessary that you need to join at the time so uh, we uh, i i raise a kind of a poll you know poll in the group so that we will stick to the common timings you know we will stick to the common timings this conference is no longer being recorded
Okay, so how much time every day it will take a uh, session? Like you said, five yeah. to nine you are available. Every day. So how many hours? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be one hour, guys. It's going to be one hour. <clears throat> one hour, one hour to one hour, 15 minutes max. One hour to one hour, 15 minutes max. And homeworks will be given. Like, um, after you know, for, for the first one week, uh, you need to listen and everything. You need to take a note. Anyways, I will give you notes. It's up to you. you know, if you take uh, notes or not, it's up to you. But from my end, I will give. After that, actually, it's going to be one hour to one hour, 15 minutes. One hour to one hour, 15 minutes. Oh. And uh, Python, Hadoop, and PySpark, uh, these three things are included in the package or uh, are the prices separate for uh, these things? Yeah. See, there are two things here. First one is Python. Another one is PySpark. Let me, be, let me put the things very clear. We have two things here. One is Python and PySpark. So we have 12 members online and some people particularly ask for Python and some people ask for both Python and PySpark. Both can join the same class. You know, both can join the same class. People who are looking for only Python can, can you know, can, you know, can stop joining after Python is done. After Python is done. Here we have two packages, Python and PySpark. The fee will be different to Python and PySpark individually. And it is not necessarily, it is going to be 45 days. For example, I have not at uh, uh, speak to you, speak to each and everyone individually. I speak to uh, each and every person individually. If you are a complete and new fresher, like, you know, you just passed out your engineering and you were, if you are zero with your um, programming skills, then it will be around 30 five to 45 days. If everyone are experienced and they have a little knowledge about the programming or SQL or any kind of programming language, even the SQL is also programming language. You know, I mean, though it is not a programming language, you will have the basics of the programming language. Then we can wrap everything into 30 days. Okay, one question, uh, The thing is, uh, once we learn this Python and PySpark, uh, and uh, see, we are coming from different uh, technologies altogether, and we are learning this technology for the first time. So, how is the placement market? I mean, is it easy to go, or how how you can help us to build our resume and uh, how to get into a job? Perfecto. Is this Shiva or Sharikia? Sorry. Yeah, Sharikia. So, let me put... Uh, things very clearly, you know, let me put things very clearly. Say like if you have eight years of experience and you are putting resume on Python, say like I'm a Python, you know, till yesterday I'm working on SQL and I'm thought of having continue my career in Python, I can do Python for sure. Maybe this will work in other part of the world, whereas in India, it won't work for sure. Okay, the reason being, you know, no one will leave you are a programmer, though you crack the interview. So you need to, tweak your resume in such a way like that you have been working on Python at least from the last one, one and a half year with respect to your project. If you are well-versed with the Python and the practice that, if you are well-versed with the Python and if you do practice well, I can help you, I can help you so that you can tweak your resume on Python even. But I really can give the projects and all the stuff, but I can help you so that you can, you know, how you should tell your project in Python. And the job market is very good, actually. You know, and the job market is very good. Python jobs. And I'm seeing a lot of the you know, Python developer, Python developer, Capgemini. And we have a lot of jobs, I guess. It is growing, actually, it is growing. And um, and what I can say is, like, it is a correct time for you to uh, to move to Python. At least learn Python. Watch how the market is going. The reason being, don't no one knows Python at this point of time. So out of 10 questions, out of 10 questions, if you, you, know, if you can crack up to six, that's going to be fine. No complex of the questions you will face. Say, like, after... If you start your, you know, if you, you know, if you are on Java, people have almost 10, 20 years of experience in Java and they will for sure screw you. 
whereas in python no person at least in hyderabad bangalore chennai has more experience than 3 years that is what i feel mm. hello yeah, we have a good number of uh, yeah please shiva uh, yeah. sorry sorry to interrupt you there uh, i have no, a question okay. down line uh, when you said yeah. about the structure of python like uh, i haven't seen your structure with the content with the python can you just be more specific with your python sessions please no i didn't get you shiva uh, with respect to the python sessions Uh, I seen okay. you like uh, having the basic kind of an uh, uh, notes over uh, like basic kind of an uh, saying over there, but I can't see any specific content. Can you just share the content, or can you open up your content? What you going to teach us? Okay, content. Okay, fine. I got it. You mean the content of Python? Okay. Yeah, can I share I mean, after I mean, this class? Actually, I mean, um, yeah. I meant to say, I meant to say, I meant to ask with your sessions. Uh, I know with the Python content, uh, with the modules and everything. Okay. But 